the Dallas Stars have their first divisional matchup of the regular season tonight in Winnipeg against the Jets. On today's episode, I'll be joined by host of the Locked On Winnipeg Jets podcast, Harrison Lee, to talk all things Stars and Jets. We'll talk about storylines from each team, talk about some players to watch out for, and talk about our overall predictions for the game. All of this and more on a very special game day crossover episode of Locked On Stars. <laughs> Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis. It is Tuesday, November 2nd. Once again, Dallas Stars game day. And as you heard me say at the top of the show, um, just in a few moments, I will be joined by host of the Locked On Jets podcast, Harrison Lee, to talk about everything regarding tonight's game. But before we do that, I want to take a moment and say thank you for stopping by the show, whether you are a recurring listener or this is your first time here at Locked On Stars. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, It truly means a lot to me. Thank you for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. I encourage you to subscribe Subscribe to the podcast, follow the podcast, uh, whether that's on a podcasting platform or on YouTube. Uh, And if you feel so inclined, I encourage you to leave a review if you like what you hear. But without any further hesitation, let's jump into today's crossover interview with Harrison Lee of Locked On Jets to talk about tonight's matchup. Hey, everyone. I'm now joined by host of the Locked On Jets podcast, Harrison Lee. Um, And we're here to talk everything that talk about everything you need to know about tonight's matchup between the stars and jets uh but harrison how are you doing today i'm glad that you're that we're able to cross over and collaborate on this doing well thank you i hope all is well on your end yeah yeah things are are great here or at least for me personally i can't necessarily say the same for the dallas stars uh they've certainly uh done better um at past times and even earlier this season um but now necessarily not as much um but what we're going to kind of do now is just talk about some storylines surrounding both of these teams. And so I'm going to start first, just kind of asking Harrison um, kind of for some insight about what's going on in the Winnipeg Jets organization and how this season has gone for them so far. So Harrison, what would you say is kind of the biggest storyline surrounding the Jets as of right now that's kind of um, been circulating around the team early on this season? Oh, Lord. Uh, Where (laughs) does where does one even begin? Um, It's. I would say like the past couple of weeks have been very strange. Um, I know a lot of people have been paying attention to the Aldridge case and everything. And right now, of course, uh, the Jets GM, Kevin Shoveldayoff, has been uh, a part of that situation. And and certainly he's been questioned and all that. And I, I think a lot of the stuff that has come out of the case right now makes it seem as though his role has been more minor relative to a lot of the other participants. But, you know, with the Jets fan base, it's been... It's been very complicated, to, to put it lightly. Um, and like on the ice, it, it's been strange too. I mean, the, the team has had COVID. Um, you've had players who have been asked about the situation. And the team, the off season was one of a lot of change. There was a lot of roster turnover. And now there's all this organizational chaos. Uh, the media scrutiny has definitely been very intense. Um, within the fan base, there are a lot of divided feelings about what should be done with the team. And the Jets are just kind of like stuck in the middle, I guess, being mediocre. I wouldn't really say that they're particularly great. They have moments where they look like a really functional hockey club. And then there are other times where it's like, yeah, uh, you might get smacked around by an AHL team. So I don't really know. (laughs) The the season has been kind of strange. Um, If you had asked me, like before the whole shovel day off stuff came out, what the biggest storyline would be, it would probably be that the team has been underperforming relative to like all of the changes. but. Now, uh, the Sheffield Day Off case has obviously kind of taken over the limelight, and it's going to be probably the main storyline for at least the next several months. Certainly, certainly. Do do you think that that storyline is kind of making its way onto the ice, perhaps, and kind of maybe not necessarily messing with the players, but do you think it's kind of factoring into maybe how they are playing and how they will potentially play over the next few weeks? You know, I I don't really know. And Blake Wheeler was kind of asked about this because – uh, he finally just came back from COVID isolation. And he he wasn't really committal on any sort of response beyond trying to say, in so many words, like, you know, Shovel Day Off has supported me in the past, so I'm not going to, like, put him on blast. 
Um, and I, I think a lot of the players are certainly thinking about it. Some of them I'm probably glad that they haven't asked because there's a good chance that their response wasn't going to be ideal. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know if it's really bled onto the ice. I mean, a lot of the stuff that they're doing right now and the issues that they have, it's kind of stuff that's been a recurring theme with this team. I think that's kind of like my general takeaway. So I don't think it has had a direct impact on the ice, but I do think, at least on a personal level, a lot of the players are probably feeling very mixed things. Some of the guys have kind of said, you know, we stand with Kyle Kyle Beach and a number of different statements um, of that note, but not many people talking about management, not many people responding to that stuff. So it's, it's an odd situation. And I, I don't pretend to even know how I would be in that situation if I was a player and kind of knew all this was going on. Right. Yeah. Certainly hard to, to put ourselves in that situation and uh, all the emotions and, you know, uh, opinions that are you know are said or whether you know whether they're said or not um that the that the players are carrying and so certainly just kind of a an odd aspect to um carry in, into every game on a nightly basis playing an NHL schedule and then having this dumped on top of you is is certainly um not easy by by any means um but what would you kind of say speaking of play on the ice um what has kind of been maybe a strength of this Winnipeg team, you, you've mentioned that, you know, they haven't looked fantastic, but, the, you know, they've had solid moments, but they've also had some shaky moments. But what would you say has kind of been a strength for this Winnipeg Jets team so far this season on the ice? Ironically, it kind of comes down to one player, which is a strange thing to say about, a, you know, a team that has lots of talent. Uh, in lieu of, of Shifley and Wheeler being out with COVID, the guy who really stepped up and, and kind of came to the plate was Dubois. And his line has kind of carried the Jets over the past couple of weeks. Um, Winnipeg's offense right now, it's it's okay. Sometimes it's like break even and scoring opportunities and stuff. Uh, and they kind of have to be because the PK is a well, <laughs> yeah, it does well, it does kill penalties, um, but just not the way that people would usually expect. So Dubois, I think, has been an absolute monster. And it's like the primary reason that the Jets have kind of gotten fortunate so far. I think as their luck starts to fade out and if Dubois goes through a rough patch, uh, this team is going to look a lot less powerful. I think that they have moments where certain lines do click, but there's just, I think a lot of people overrate the Jets offense because there are some coaching issues and honestly, the roster personnel, it's just not as good as it used to be. And I think that that tends to get overlooked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, And I, I'm looking at I have, uh, you know, the the Jets roster and kind of some stats pulled up. Um, and I'm very jealous to see that you have, you know, Dubois with 10 points so far this season. Kyle Connor with 14. Uh, the the highest star with points uh, is Miro Haskinen with seven. Um, so quite a big difference there when it comes to offensive production, um, which I'll probably get to touch on here in a little bit. Um, but kind of the last question I have concerning um, some questions about the Winnipeg Jets is how would you. Um, describe the performance of y'all's goalie, um, Connor Hellebuck, so far this season. I think, um, I know myself, you know, I, I said that he was going to be one of the best goalies in the league this season. Um, and his numbers, just kind of from the way I'm seeing it, look a little more down than than I think many expected them to be. Um, so from what your, from your perspective, what um, do you kind of have to say or what are your opinions on his performance so far through about seven games played? I think he's been fine. Uh, the first couple of games, he... Every year he kind of goes through a stretch where he has like the first start of the season that's not particularly uh, great. Um, this year I thought that he just looked a little bit slower on his reads and stuff, which just could be like rust and getting back into the season. Over the past couple of games, I think he he's definitely improved at even strength and a couple of times I think he's made some stellar saves. The biggest problem is that <clears throat> his numbers are going to be terrible because the PK just, it's it's been a total sieve. Honestly, the Jets might as well just accept a goal against and forfeit the penalty kill because, <laughs> I mean, they, they've really struggled. I mean, they they have no aggression. And so Hellebuck doesn't really have a lot of help. Um, and his tendency to kind of deflect rebounds into the slot area uh, and kind of give an opportunity where usually your defense would clear that for you, the Jets just don't do that. So oftentimes I think he has trouble trying to, trying to navigate some of his own mistakes. Um, on a lot of other teams, I think the Jets... Uh, or, or Hellebuck would actually be given a lot more support in that respect. But for now, Winnipeg just kind of keeps flinging it up the walls and hoping for the best. Uh, other teams have kind of picked up on that. And so his number's not so good so far. 
Today's episode is brought to you by DirecTV. Does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment that you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and TV shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Dallas, who has struggled so far this season on the power play, can maybe uh, you know take advantage of that, or if maybe they'll make you, the Winnipeg penalty kill look like one of the best in the league. Um, but only time will tell uh, as far as tonight goes. Um, but kind of moving on, um, what are some questions that you have about the Dallas Stars, whether it's for the overall season or more specifically for tonight's game? So th- this one I, I kind of thought about, and uh, you know, thinking about a similar team that the Jets just played, um, the LA Kings, the Dallas Stars in a lot of respects, very different stages of where these teams are, but I- I've had issues trying to figure out what to make of both teams. Like I look at Dallas's roster and where they're going and, and kind of what they want to be. Um, but what would you say is like the primary direction of this team? Because like I think that they have, they've got plenty of really good NHL talent right now. But as you start kind of rolling down the lines and you kind of recognize that, well, like you said, scoring is kind of an issue. What What is the direction that they're trying to push towards? I think the direction that they're trying to push towards and what I, I hope and I think many Stars fans hope that they're pushing toward is consistency on offense. I think that the focus of this team over the past several seasons and especially so far this season has seemed to be defense, um, which defense isn't a bad thing to play at all. And our penalty kill has been um, I, I think a, a little bit above average, if not near the top part of the league when it comes to percentage and whatnot in numbers. Um, but overall, I think what the coaching staff is kind of wanting to see and, and even the players based on what they've said in press conferences is just to find consistency on offense um, because the defense and our goalies can only do so much. You know, we had, you know, Ben Bishop back when he was healthy a few seasons ago who had an amazing playoff run up until game seven of the second round against St. Louis, where ultimately Dallas fell short because the offense just couldn't get anything going. Um, kind of the same thing with the Stanley Cup run in the bubble in Edmonton. Anton Hudobin, a really great postseason run, um, but Dallas's inability to put the puck in the net um, leaves the defense vulnerable, leaves Hudobin vulnerable. And so we're kind of seeing that again with Braden Holtby, um, who's off to a, a fairly nice start this season. Nothing uh, fantastic, especially over the past few games, but, you know, a pretty nice start considering the way he's played the past few seasons. Um, and so we're kind of seeing that all start over again. So I think that the hope is that, you know, they're bringing in some young guys like Jason Robertson. Uh, Dennis Gurionov, Rupe Hints, um, guys that can eventually, you know, fill the role of guys like Joe Pavelski and Jamie Ben, Alexander Radulov, guys that are in the twilights of their careers and hoping, you know, and even at the AHL level, we have some guys that can score really, really well, um, like Jacob Peterson, who who played in the first few games of the season for the Dallas Stars at the NHL level before moving down to the AHL last week. Uh, so I think the hope is that they can develop some really nice forwards that can score effectively, but also score consistently. Um, so that way the defense Uh, and whoever's in the net for the stars doesn't have as much pressure put on them every single night and kind of on the on the theme of of players who are starting to enter the fold and stuff um, if you could pick like one player that you think is is primed to have a major impact on the season that maybe hasn't gotten as much attention yet or is still kind of under the radar who would you think that the jets fans and really basically central division fans should be keeping an eye on yeah, and there's a lot of guys that I think that could could fill this role, and I and you know I think that a lot of Central Division fans, and especially uh, you know in regards to Tyler Sagan and Jamie Ben, like they they know those guys, and even Joe Pavelski, um, even though he hasn't been in the Central Division very long, um, he's been in the NHL for several years and been one of the best forwards. But those are kind of some of the older guys. I think that those guys are known. Um, but Denis Gurionov, who I mentioned just a little bit ago, um, is a guy that I think, and I think many others think, is due for a big season uh, this year. He hasn't necessarily done too much yet. Um, only one goal through. Uh, he has played in every single game for us and had some nice opportunities to score. Um, but again, we, despite the opportunities that we get, there just never seems to be you know a surplus of goals. I don't think Dallas has scored more than three goals in regulation all season so far. Um, so that's something they're definitely looking to build on. But I think Denis Gurionov has slowly improved ever since he's been a part of the Stars organization. 
Um, and so I think many fans are hoping that he's able to take that next step into maybe not necessarily being a superstar, but at least a guy that, you know, fans know about when they see the stars on their schedule. Like, oh, this is a guy we have to watch out for um, because he's one of the best skaters on the team. Um, and that's probably one of his most underrated attributes um, because he can pass, he can shoot. Uh, just an overall really good hockey player, and he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, when he gets in the zone, he just hasn't quite found his zone uh, just yet this season. And and kind of thinking about finding that consistency and, and sort of scoring opportunities and stuff, what do you think has kind of gone wrong with the power play? It sounds like that has been a bit of a sticking point. Yeah, yeah, it's it certainly has been. And it's been frustrating to watch at times because earlier in the season, I think a part of the issue was a lack of shots and a lack of, you know, opportunities, whether it was just Dallas being sloppy with the puck um, or passing up on good scoring opportunities. Um, but recently uh, it's literally just been the shots not going in, which sounds m maybe even more like an excuse. And I, I mean, I think it's easy to see that even from a fan perspective, listening to the player interviews, but that's what, you know, coach, the coach of the stars, Rick bonus has been saying, you know, that he likes the opportunities guys are getting um, that goalies are just, you know, reading the plays really well and making the right saves despite there being good looks. And so I think, you know, it's kind of one of those things where there's not really much you can fix. So you just have to keep trying and trying until, you know, eventually, hopefully the floodgates open. Um, because over the past several games, the Dallas Stars have had some really, really nice opportunities. Uh, and even some of their most recent goals have been from the power play. Uh, I know Joe Pavelski scored the lone goal against Ottawa in Dallas's last game on Friday. I um, mean, it was on a power play and it was a pretty quick power play goal, too. Um, so really encouraging to see that they are starting to find a little bit of success there, even if it's small. Um, so as weird as it might sound, I don't I don't know if they're necessarily doing anything wrong on the power play. They're just not getting the results they want, if that makes sense. So they just got to keep trying, keep finding those open looks and then taking those uh, once those looks present themselves instead of passing out um, and trying to get fancy or, you know, be a hero when there's really no need for that. Yeah, and, and kind of given, you know, taking all of that into account and especially what will be most likely a tough road matchup against the Jets tomorrow, or I guess tonight, and uh, depending <laughs> on when people are listening to this. Yes. Um, what What do you think the scoreline might look like? I kind of think it, it'll be like 3-2 Jets, but I feel like it's kind of a toss-up between these two. Uh, yeah, I could absolutely see a scoreline like that. I could also see Dallas maybe even only scoring one goal and then giving up more than three, or I could see it you know, being one to two. I, I certainly can envision the Jets winning. I think you know the Stars... Uh, they're on a three-game losing skid, and I, I don't know if the cycle ends just yet tonight. I, I, it would be nice if it would, um, but just realistically, uh, just kind of where they're at, and you know, and I mean, it's hard to play well on the road, but especially when your team's morale is already kind of kind of down and low. I, I think um, realistically, I think three to two, or maybe even like four to three, Winnipeg, uh, you know, could be the result. But if the Stars win, I, I envision it being close as well, um, and it might have to be in overtime if the Stars win. Uh, which would be unfortunate because those are the only way that's the only way Dallas has won this season. Their three wins, all of them have come in overtime or in a shootout. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if anyone knows about winning very fortunate games or situations where you probably should have just put it to bed and didn't it's Jets fans. We are, we are uh, very accustomed to blown leads. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. We, uh, we, we had our struggle with that last season as well with overtime. I think Dallas had 14 overtime losses last season and the league average was like six. So <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe there's more in common with Stars fans and Jets fans than we know. Bet Online is back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of basketball season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for the basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus for your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus from basketball, football postseason baseball, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Um, but what would you kind of say, just going back to um, some other, uh, another quick question about the game. Who You asked about the Dallas Stars, maybe a guy that is under the radar that Jets fans should know about. Who would you say is that guy for the Winnipeg Jets that maybe Stars fans aren't super familiar with or even uh, Central Division fans or NHL fans in general on the Winnipeg roster? Uh, the guy that I've, I've kind of started to notice more and more frequently has been Evgeny Svechnikov. Um, I was very much, I had him on my fantasy roster for a couple of years now. Um, and so I was always kind of hoping that he'd be primed for a breakout. And of course, the injuries and stuff to his upper body have kind of derailed much of his professional career. Now it kind of seems like he's finally starting to put two and two together. And if he can just stay healthy, 
I think that he has the kind of release that's dangerous. Um, what I've noticed with him with the Jets is that his passing and positioning tend to be really good. He did get demoted in the last game, which could be an issue. I think he needs to be playing with like, you know, genuine skill guys like Dubois. Um, if he's kind of paired with grinders, a lot of what makes him a skilled player and a special player kind of goes away. And it's not like he's going to be like a 30 goal scorer, but I, I think if you give him space and time, he is somebody that brings um, much needed scoring depth to the Jets. And he, you know, he already has a goal and a couple of points. So I could see him being an issue against some of those depth lines. Um, if Dallas kind of loses track of him in the chaos. Yeah. He, he does have the, the ability to really hurt you quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that he'll be a fun guy to watch. And hopefully this is a, a fun and entertaining game. This is, uh, I know Dallas's first divisional matchup. Winnipeg has already played, uh, who, who have you guys played in the division? I know I looked earlier and you guys had played at least one divisional matchup. Was it Minnesota? Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about that game. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, that was someone I think we blew in overtime. It was like 6-5. Uh, uh, I got you. Yes, that, yeah, that sounds familiar now. I was looking at you at the schedule earlier from, from Winnipeg. And yes, I do remember seeing that now. But at least Minnesota is one of, one of the better teams in the Central Division. We could be doing uh, a lot worse. The Stars and Jets, um, at least we're not... Uh, Arizona, I guess, even though I feel bad picking on them because they're new to the division, um, but certainly could be a lot worse. But I'm excited for tonight's game. Uh, Stars fans, if you need more information or insight on the Winnipeg Jets, I encourage you to go check out Harrison on his show, the Lockdown Jets podcast. And Harrison, where can uh, Stars fans find you on social media or where else can Stars fans find you um, in case they're looking for more Winnipeg insight before tonight's game? Uh, I write for SB Nation at Arctic Ice Hockey. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets for our podcast Twitter. I mostly keep my ranting to my personal Twitter account. Try not to uh, clog up the, uh, the podcast account <laughs> too much, but y'all y'all can find me there. Awesome. Yeah, Stars fans, you heard it here first. And for any Jets fans listening, uh, my name is Dane. I don't know if I ever said that in the intro um, to this show, but uh, my name is Dane Lewis, the host of the Locked on Stars podcast. You can find me uh, at Dane double underscore Lewis on Twitter, and you can just find the Stars show at Locked on Stars on Twitter as well. Uh, but Harrison, thank you so much for joining today. I'm glad we were able to do this crossover, um, building anticipation for the Stars first divisional matchup of the season tonight in Winnipeg, and we will see how the game goes. But thank you again for joining me today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. We're back, folks. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Harrison Lee of Locked On Jets. I know I enjoyed it. Always fun to collaborate with other hosts here at the Locked On Podcast Network. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Stars. Thank you for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Host Scott Cohen leans in on his decades of fantasy hockey insight and experience every day to help you be the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms, so go give Scott a listen if you want to win your fantasy hockey league. Be sure to subscribe to the show here and tell your friends about it. Leave a review if you enjoy what you hear. Thank you again for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars. You can find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. I know you just heard me say that in the interview with Harrison, so I won't repeat myself there. You can also find the show at Locked on Stars as well. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts at. Subscribe on YouTube as well. Thank you guys again so much for listening, and we will be back here tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Stars to break down this game against the Winnipeg Jets. See you tomorrow, Stars fans.